How is it? It's so good. If the girl is alive, I want to go back with a written message, with a photograph. If I cannot get her out now, at least I will tell the father, have hope. She's alive. And that's all I want. Not only for her, for all other children. I want to see their faces. Our children are alive. They were there in the hands of the rebels. A situation we imagine is like a hostage situation. Two hundred people here in the middle of the jungle, quite literally, asking themselves the same question: What actually is going to happen now? Bear in mind that this is a man wanted by the International Criminal Court. They brand him a war criminal, and the appearance of a collapse in these negotiations is going to send a signal, which is that this man is clearly not serious about peace. We were on our way to witness history in the making to document the end of Africa's longest running war. That guy there, his name is Bobby. And over there, that's Laren. And that's me, Jason. And these are child soldiers, taken against their will. And after looking in their eyes and shaking their hands, we now know that six years of work has led up to this the rescue of Joseph Coney's child soldiers. The problem just gets bigger and bigger and it seems unsolvable. And so it's really a pivotal time right now. There's a window of opportunity to go and get this. The world knows that they're just a rebel army, but in truth, they're children. So that's why I'm going in. This journey started in the suburbs of Southern California with three normal guys. We grew up surfing, playing sports, and goofing around. Nice job, Oh my God. But the one thing we had in common was that we all loved to make movies. So we have this map of southern Sudan. It needs to be flipped around. We didn't plan on doing this, we're just doing it. <laughs> we asked friends and family to help us raise the money, and after six months of planning, with three tickets and $300 in our pockets, we were off on an African adventure. Ended up in Uganda where a nine-month pregnant woman named Jolie Okat picked us up and took us to her home in northern Uganda. Is this where you grew up? This is your home. This is my home. You were born here. Yeah, we were born here. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving her home at dusk, we were driving back, but nothing prepared us for what happened next. for them to shoot up, shoot someplace up, some village. Yeah, it's very common. And here's the town that's now impacted because everyone fled the village. Uh -huh. We rushed into the town to escape the rebels Jolie was talking about, where we saw thousands and thousands of children flooding into the city. All of them were seeking safety in abandoned buildings. These kids were escaping from being abducted abducted and turned into child soldiers. The sight was shocking and life-changing. How long have the rebels been doing this to you? How long? 15 years. 15 years? Yes. And who is stopping this? No. Nobody. Some of them hadn't been so fortunate. We met a boy named Jacob who told us he was once an abducted child soldier. I was abducted when I was still young. I was abducted when I was only 12 years old. They told me that you are now a soldier. Do not try to escape. If you try to escape, then we get you again. Then we are going to kill you. Jacob was abducted when he was 11 years old, forced to see and do horrific things. He explained that the rebels, led by a man named Joseph Coney, 
kidnap children while they sleep and force them into a life of violence. My brother tried to escape. Then they kill using panga. What is panga? Machete. Hmm. Yes, they cut his neck. Did you see it? I saw. Mm. I tried to cry, but they say that when I cry, they are going to kill me. We couldn't imagine the things this boy and so many others his age had seen. Dude, we, we will get bottles and don't do that anymore. <laughs> For two months, we stayed, hung out, and laughed with Jacob. We had so much in common, but on the last night we were with him, he reminded us how we were different. You would uh, rather we... die than stay on Earth. Yes. Uh, now, even now. Even now. How is, are we going to stay uh, in our future? The only two, no one taking care of us. I don't. <laughs> even though Jacob had escaped, he lived every day in fear that the rebels would re-abduct him. We knew we had to do our part to end the war for him and for those abducted child soldiers that hadn't escaped. We needed to understand everything about the history of this war, so we talked to hundreds of people, and this is what we learned. When the British colonized Uganda, they gave jobs and education to the people in the South but forced the Acholi people of the North to become laborers and soldiers. After independence, the Northerners rebelled, and since that day, the North and South have fought each other for control of Uganda. A rebel leader from the South named Uweri Museveni came to power in 1986. The Northerners rebelled, and a boy named Joseph Kony joined a group of rebel fighters that became known as the Lord's Resistance Army, or LRA. He rose to leadership proclaiming spiritual powers, and he promised success to those who fought with him. Kony never came close to overthrowing Museveni, who is still the president of Uganda today. Over the years, Kony lost the support of his people, and in frustration, he brutally attacked them and began to abduct children to fight for his rebellion. In the last two decades, Kony has kidnapped over 30,000 children for his army. In 1996, Museveni forced the Atrolli into displacement camps. Though the camps were originally meant to protect people, the conditions are so terrible, a thousand die every week as they wait for emergency relief. We didn't understand how one rebel fighter, Joseph Kony, could terrorize millions. He said that Kony is around here, you yourself here, you will run away. After now, I fear him because he is somebody using spirit. His eyes has become red in color. Yes, he walks on, on, in water. He will do anything he likes. You know, everything is so illogical about it. They don't have territorial claims. They don't have political claims. It's just a cultic group around this, this figure of Joseph Kohn. Joseph Kohn is like the Messiah. He's like Jesus Christ. And the next hour, they're just killing innocent people for nothing, for no reason. This rebel leader, Joseph Kohn, why chop off somebody's mouth? Of what meaning is it? Of what political interest is it? I believe that there are people in this world who live for evil. And for me, Joseph Kony is a very clear example. Because he has made the life of hundreds of thousands of millions of people absolutely miserable. What a waste of life to live for that. Father Carlos had almost died trying to meet Kony, but he told us about an Acholi woman who had succeeded, Betty Bogombe. I thought, well, if people are dying, this is a calling. I think I should go. Chances of coming back alive is, may not be very good. I put it at 50-50. So it was just you? It was just me. Found LRA, my God. It was very scary. A very young kid. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, the children who guided me all the time were maybe 11, 10, 11. They poured their oil on me. They grabbed me by their neck sometimes. All kinds of weird things, very scary. Things. First of all, I was just amazed at his own security. You know, the people who stand around him, he swerves this way, they swerve with him. 
And so he talks, his eyes are all red. He really sends down fear. Khan considers himself a god. Even me, as a person, was skeptical about, is this somebody who is ready to relinquish that control, power, and influence he has? Is this possible? I personally signed letters, 25,000. If you come out, I'll receive you, I'll resettle you. And LRA started defecting in large number. That was a huge turning point. Then LRA reacted by doing this. They started mutilating, cutting off, because people were defecting in large number, pleaded, pleaded with him. The magnitude of killing we're going to do is going to shock the whole world. Three months later, the attack massacre took place, where over 300 people were massacred children. When I went there, it was traumatizing. That's not even the word. Each time Betty has come close to a peace deal between the LRA and the Ugandan government, Kony has backed out, allowing this war to continue for 23 years. Despite the dangers of contacting the LRA, we wanted to hear from their own mouths why Kony continued to back out of the peace talks. We weren't talking to the child soldiers who make up 90% of their army. We were talking to the men that held them captive. Hello? Um, we came here in 2003 and we turned around in Gulu and that's when we saw the night commuters and we really began seeing the suffering of the children in northern Uganda. And so we decided then it is time that um, people understand about this war and why this war is going on. And so we have come back to open our ears and to open a channel of dialogue. I want to tell you that people are not seeing what's going on right here, thank you. Because people are seeing on the one side of the coin. Mm. We corresponded with the LRA through the phone, letters, and video for months. We realized that there's two sides to every story. This war is only gonna end two ways, by the gun, by peace, and we favor peace. We wanted to help find a peaceful way to end this war and bring the child soldiers home. So they think you guys want to help. You are the last bunch of people they trust. If this time you guys fail to bring the LRA out, then the war is never going to end. You guys, they really trust you. Who talks about us? The rebels. When you say the rebels, are you talking about like Joseph Coney and Joseph Vincent Coney. O.T.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't try to blow them <laughs> We're so young. After contacting the LRA, we didn't know where to start, so we started with what we knew. We returned home and made a documentary called Invisible Children about Jacob. We knew we needed to find people who would join us in ending this war. We asked our friends to help, and they asked their friends. Together, through the generosity of thousands, we raised millions of dollars to put Jacob and hundreds of other children in school. Jolie began to mentor the students and work alongside many others to educate future leaders of peace. We went to our nation's capital to see if the people in power could help end this war. There are three young dudes that saw a chance to do something, saw something wrong, and said, what are we going to do? And so they make a film about it. You have access and ability to do things to help people. And if you don't do it, somebody's going to die because there's no voice. It's not heard, it's not seen, it's invisible. They're invisible children. And I, I can name right now 20 or 30 different things, causes that people are rallying around, and this just isn't one of them. Yeah. And this is the kids. We don't have any enemies here. We just have apathy and indifference to overcome. And that means that everybody out walks out of this room, doesn't write a letter, you're part of the problem. We hosted a rally where tens of thousands came together to help end night commuting. We brought Jacob so he could tell his story in person. My dear sister and brothers, Americans, you're sleeping here will help us a lot because the government now will take that this is real. It should come to an end. Thanks. Make sure that all of you guys do not underestimate the power of the letters that you wrote tonight. We will knock on senators' doors and we will ask them what they are going to do for the children and the people in northern Uganda. 
Jacob's words resonated. Night commuting ended and peace talks began. But it wasn't enough because the child soldiers were still held hostage. So in 2007, we had another rally. And as a result of our letters, the United States appointed a senior level diplomat to help bring the children home. We've had a big impact. We've uh, been able to have direct input to both delegations. They just yesterday, we signed the ceasefire, a permanent ceasefire that silences the guns. We uh, expect to find to sign a final peace agreement, we hope, within a week's time. The peace talks were succeeding like never before. However, there were some who didn't think that Joseph Kony was serious about peace. The kid, Kony, different times, proposed peace and then just regain strength and attack. And attack. Everyone in Northern Uganda had to say, stop Kony, stop him, and then solve all the problems. The simple idea to do whatever the bad leader wants is not working. Mm -hmm. And Kony proved this five times. How many times Kony would do the same? Luis Moreno Ocampo is the head prosecutor of the International Criminal Court. We cannot deny the crimes. For the last 21 years, Connie is abducting children, transforming them in monsters. And we interviewed a guy, 16 years old boy. He told us, look, I was abducted when I was nine. My older brother of 12 tried to stop them because I was very young and they killed my brother in front of me. From those days, I did whatever they asked me. I, I dropped a baby to a river because the mother was not walking fast enough. I burn a family in Bologna, I kill people. And they turn from this, this beautiful guy in a monster. And of course, something cannot, cannot return. Something cannot go back to a normal life. The ICC is a new type of court established in 2002 to punish the worst criminals in the world. And Joseph Kony is the first man wanted for trial on account of war crimes. Something, something interesting, we're not just a court. We're a global criminal justice system. Whoever commits genocide, whoever commits crimes against humanity, will be punished. That's the main idea. And Connie is the first guy indicted by the ICC. These guys are committing crimes as a normal way to get power. Allowing Connie to regain forces will be painful, painful, painful. In April 2008, we got the triumphant call. Kony had accepted the agreement, and within days, he would sign for peace. The mood in northern Uganda was full of hope. Peace in northern Uganda is just a few steps uh, ahead, and I'm sure that both delegations are ready so that we can conclusively attain peace. The thing is, don't lose heart. Now that peace that none of us ever believed would come as a matter of time. I need also not to fight again with the Uganda government. I'm going to see that everything is perfect. There's going to be peace. Kony himself would come out of the bush and meet a peace delegation near his hideout in the Garamba forest. We were invited to document this historic moment. Soon, thousands of child soldiers would come home and Africa's longest war would finally end. We're about to take off in one hour in a helicopter, fly into his hideout. Saying that they even even there out there. Yeah, they're out here yeah, right now. Mm. I can't the rebels. See. I can't see. Yeah, you can't see them. You see them? You see them? The LRI. Some of them will be on top of the trees, all that kind of thing. They get irritated, put down the camera first. Mm. Now put down your This is 
by far the most confusing story that I've ever worked on. Uh, at the moment, there are more than 200 people here in the middle of the jungle, so we're all simply just waiting to see what transpires on Friday morning. Now, the Vice President of Southern Sudan, who's one of the chief mediators uh, here, uh, is telling us that Joseph Kony may indeed come out of the bush and finally sign this peace agreement. We want to see an end to this war, more than anything, and we want to see it peacefully. Just waiting for Joseph Kony, trying to hang out a little bit with the LRA and figure out what they're going to do if they're going to actually go for peace. But the agreement, you know very well, takes time. We have to study each and every one. The peace talks are kind of um, unstable right now because the LRA is threatening to pull out of the peace talks. This is by far a nightmare. I I'm okay, serious, the, the I've never worked in this sort of plus... environment as hell. <gasps> London, to oh, I've got the well, I'm sort of stressed at the moment, very stressed indeed. Uh, we've just done our last live broadcast, um, basically just saying that, you know, Joseph Coney didn't show up and it's looking very unlikely that he, he's going to show. Kwan is very close here, he's like a kilometer away, but he cannot accept. It's so hard. It pains you? Yeah, everyone is so disappointed. People want to cry. We're on our fifth day in Garamba. The peace process has failed. Everybody went home. We're remaining with a few people, hoping that it might still succeed, but it doesn't look good. Why are we catering to him? Mm -mm. So not with it. It's gonna kill a lot of people still. I don't wanna be one of them. Why are we playing right into his hands? Those uh, nine and ten year olds were the only reason why I'd want to continue anyways. Because seeing with the guns was. in real life, it was really intense, you know? It's like I was thinking what I was doing when I was nine or ten. And they're like slaves of these. this rebel army. That has no purpose or point. But we failed the children because we are there to protect them. And we didn't. Every single minute that takes away, a child is dying, a child is being injured, a child is, is starving to death. If the girl is alive, I want to go back with a written message, with a photograph. If I cannot get her out, out now, at least I will tell the father, have hope. She's alive, and that's all I want. Not only for her, for all other children. I want to see their faces. Our children are alive. Before we left, the child soldiers gave us their notes to return to their families at home. Tony made the decision to stay in the bush and continue this war. 
He defeated us all. But the defeat was not new to the child soldiers. Since the day they were abducted, they have been waiting for Kony to give up his fight. Of all those who suffer because of this war, the child soldier is the most invisible child. No one knows whether he lives or dies. We went home devastated, but we couldn't imagine what would happen next. Allowing Connie to regain forces <laughs> would be painful. We are going to shock the world with what we're going to do. With the magnitude of killing we're going to do, it's going to shock the whole world. Some of these attacks occurred on Christmas. More than 220 people have been kidnapped by the uh, Lord's Resistance Army, including some 160 children. Nearly 540 people have been killed and more than 400 kidnapped by the LRA. The number of forcibly displaced in this part of the Democratic Republic of Congo have now surpassed 104,000 this conflict. Because of these atrocities by the LRA, the Congo is now the most violent place in the world. So we travel to the region to see for ourselves. The population had never seen such violence and didn't understand the horrors of the LRA. We met a community of women who had lost their children and were completely hopeless. <laughs> Over the last few months, Kony has commanded his soldiers to kill thousands of people and abduct hundreds of children. By the time you watch this film, the numbers of those massacred and the children abducted will be even higher. Kony destroying a community, generations in Nigeria land. And today, they are attacking Central African Republic, they are attacking Congo. So it's not just an Acholi problem, it's a humanity problem. That's why we have to intervene. The lesson learned is they commit the crimes again. That's the point. They keep... Kony, different times, proposed peace and then just regain strength and attack, attack. What the world should know is that Kony fears justice because of the atrocities he committed on the innocent children of northern Uganda, on the people of the world. The crime he committed is against humanity. The issue is about the children. The world should come up strong. There is no way that one person is going to terrorize five countries. Who is this coin? Who is destabilizing Africa? Who is he that we can't get him? The criminal here is Kony. Stop him. We need to plan how to press Kony. People are saying, let us forgive you, let us forgive you, but for him, he doesn't want. So it's like you are trying to forgive someone who doesn't want. If there is any way to arrest him, they should arrest him. If we can get people to begin to think, OK, we're setting up a rebel army, but there are people outside that who are saying no. We're not going to have Joseph Konitz. We're not going to have Adolf Hitler's anymore. Let the world, let the international community, take justice to him there. Follow him wherever he is. First, to rescue our children. And secondly, to deliver, deliver the justice. Every day that goes by, Kony is abducting more children and killing innocent people. The governments in Uganda, Congo, Central African Republic, and Sudan cannot protect their own people. And without an international demand for justice and freedom, millions will continue to suffer without end. In the bush, thousands of children are held captive, trapped in fear of one man. We need to stop Joseph Kony and rescue the child soldiers. Oh.